So we have scalp cooling and I think that we've worked hard to bring scalp cooling into the mainstream where it most definitely is now. And we have more data coming out in the near future. It's a really exciting time where women can make that choice in most centers to keep their hair, but it costs money. And that's been a big issue. You know, we, we always look to insurance companies to uh, cover the cost of uh, the drugs we receive, the chemotherapy treatment, the surgery, the imaging, the x-rays we get. But for supportive care, it can be harder. And for hair loss, uh, which isn't a part of surviving breast cancer, but makes it a whole lot easier, insurance companies haven't yet kicked in to cover or to offset the cost of scalp cooling. So for some women, that cost can be out of reach. Now, or the way scalp cooling is generally billed is you either rent the caps when you use the manual method, or you rent time on the machine. So per treatment costs a certain amount. So there's actually an organization now available nationally within the United States that's a philanthropic organization to provide funding for women of low income who can't afford scalp cooling. And so it will offset that cost based on women's need. So by having philanthropic donations over time, we can really improve the reach of this, uh, this great option for women. It's not for everybody, for, for women with, that it's important. We want it to be available for all. So if you're interested in finding out more about this, the organization has a website called Hair to Stay, really easy to remember. We're keeping the hair on. And if you go to Hair to Stay, you can see some of the stories of women who've used scalp cooling, find out how to access uh, this resource or to donate so that other women can access it.